Today we're going to show you how to drive in the wet in sim racing. Obviously hugely relevant right now because of iRacing. And I'm here with Sam who's a professional carter, paid carter. Obviously I do a lot of sim racing as well. And we've got here a representation of a wet hairpin. Correct. And if you've never done wet weather racing before in real life or you're new to wet weather racing and sim racing, this is going to be super helpful for you. So we're going to go through it, explain how you to drive, what's the fastest way to get through these corners, how you overtake and defend. But first, Sam, we need to choose our cars. Give you give you the choice. What do you want here? Um, well, I'm a bit of a star myself, so I'll, okay. go, I'll go for that one. Right, so Sam's a star in the blue uh, AMG, and I'm going to be in the... BMW, but let's get the BMW track at the moment now. Let's just talk about wet weather lines and yep. concepts. I don't know if we want to draw actually where sort of the wet lines or dry lines, or maybe we just explain first. Yeah, I, to... I think explain it, and then we've got different. Do you want to explain colors. how you would take this hairpin, maybe first in the dry and then differently yeah. in the wet? Okay, so first of all, in the dry, you've got your normal dry, dry racing line, and it's all about angles in the dry. You always obviously want to open the angles out as much as you can so you don't lose speed. Because obviously the more you're turning, the more you're scrubbing the wheels, which means slower. So in the dry, you'd be coming out to here. You'd be going, nipping it into the apex, depending on what sort of curbs there are there. Potentially beyond the curb, potentially mm. you wouldn't. And then you'd be running out wide. So you'd want to do that ideally in one turn, yeah. one full movement. Very rarely you'd ever get they'd have some snaps. So we can open up the corner and get the, get the wheel straight on the exit and then Correct. accelerate. It, it's all about angles mm. in the dry. You're not fighting anything else. It's yeah. angles. You just need to maintain the speed as best you can. And a, and a little little um, nuance there is in the dry, we would expect this to be also a rubbered area of tarmac. Exactly, yeah. So rubber on rubber, very grippy, going to be you know more adhesion when we're braking on the tyres using that. Rubber to slow the car down, also a bit of trail braking as well. So the rubbered line is just going to be a little bit faster in the yeah, and conditions. Yeah, I mean, on modern sim games, the graphics are so good as well. And even in real life, obviously the graphics are good enough. <laughs> um, you can actually see the rubbered lines. Mm. So it gives you an idea of where you're aiming for. Yeah. They will be the shiny or the darker. Yeah, normally it lo looks a little bit darker in, um, in dry conditions. But that can be very different in the wet. So what would you do differently in the wet, Sam, to take this corner as fast as possible. I assume we're going to be in a GT3 style racing yeah. car. Let's assume we're in some medium downforce, no high downforce. It's, mm. it's like if you're watching Formula One, mm. they very rarely take wet wet lines mm. because they've got so much downforce. Yeah. It doesn't really translate for them. But for road cars, GT3s, touring cars, that type of stuff, karting, yeah. it's all very relevant. So obviously, so tarmac is very porous. When you drive your cars over it, you put a layer of rubber over the top. So it's got it's got sort of holes in it, and the exactly. water sort of goes through the yeah. holes. And then on the dry line, where all the rubber is, it stops the water from draining away. So all the water will sit there and puddle. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, you'll get the friction. Uh, you'll get a lack of friction on top of the rubber. So you tend to find you will break off the racing line, so mm -hmm. you're not breaking on the rubber. So this this is where the rubbered bit sort of is. Yeah. So the racing line is down here. Mm -hmm. You'll be breaking off. So we'll put the beamer there. Yeah. So this would be the racing line. You'd traditionally be dra breaking there in the dry. In the wet, you'd be breaking over to the outside, uh, inside. Mm. So you're staying off the rubber. That means you're breaking most efficiently because you're not sliding. And then you'd want to cut over, and then you want to stay off the racing line. Because remember, the, yeah. the racing should we, line... Should we try and shade that a little bit? I'll have, yeah. I'll have a go. <laughs> so this, let's say this is the start of the braking phase in, um, in the dry condition. So we're going to start to see rubber laid down. But at the point at which the cars are going to come off the brakes and sort of turn in. This is not part of the braking phase because normally in the dry, the cars are turning in here. Yeah, so even even going through these sort of corners, they're still obviously going to have a lot of traction. Mm. Um, so in the dry, you'd have rubber marks like this. And even over the curbs, you'll see dark exactly. marks on the curbs. And you'd have rubber like this. I know my lines aren't as straight as yours, <laughs> Kirif, but it'll give you an idea. Yeah. So you'd be over here, breaking off the rubber, and then this is the main part. This is, like I said, you don't see it in Formula 1 because they've got so much downforce. You don't want to do any actions on the rubber mm -hmm. because the rubber will be like ice. Yeah. So you want to go straight past the rubber. Yeah. And then you've got two lines of thought, depending on it. You can either oval drive it, NASCAR drive it, yeah. all the way around the outside, staying off the rubber. Or you can come over here, heavy brake, yeah. and then straighten it back up. Yeah. And so you, oh, that car don't go backwards. <laughs> Straighten it up, and then you spend as little time as possible going over the rubber. Yeah. Because 
the little time as possible there means you're not spinning your wheels, yeah. you have more traction, you have more confidence in the car that way. And then you'd straight line back over onto the next corner. So something I find very interesting whenever I go karting, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts, is when it's wet weather conditions, at every corner like this, I always try two different lines. Yeah. I always try and go around the outside and see how it feels. And I always try and get it stopped in the middle. Yeah. And especially when I'm driving with heavy weights or light weights, people do different lines. But very interested to know if you intuitively know that or if you experiment or if you've... I mean, I've, I've been kind for mm. a long time, over 20 years. So you have a good basis. I've been to a lot of tracks. So you know I, what the track's like. I know yeah, what it's yeah. like. Unless it's been resurfaced mm. like Butmore last weekend, it's all going to be the same. But you do... You never know because it's not just... Like, obviously, the tracks get wet, mm. but there'll be different stages of wetness, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. if it's monsoon, there might be puddles here, yeah, which you obviously don't want to go through. So you'll then be on the rubber. You're trying to... And every lap's different because if it's drying, it's going to be... that. Alter, alternatively, it might be the other way. It might be getting more and more wet. Yeah. Um, it's something to try. Practice. Yeah. I've always said practice days are the days to crash yeah. because it doesn't do any points. It obviously, don't damage yourself. Mm. But you don't lose any points. Yeah. And it's always worth it. So even on sim racing, you've got, you got the half hour official practice before the race starts. Yeah. Practice and that. That's the yeah. time to crash. I think, especially if you're watching this, you're, you're doing iRacing, practice, practice, practice. Because where I've noticed that I really lack compared to the top cart and drives I've raced against is the transition. So at what point, I might be like, okay, this is my line. But then I see someone overtake me or lap me and they're just they've gone back to this line and they they've they know it's faster yeah. because they're feeling it or trying it or they've they practiced and they know that when it's sort of these conditions it's going to be faster. And that's something in sim racing you can do because you're not paying extra per lap. You're not paying fuel, you're not paying for tires. It's it's all part of the same whatever you paid for your sim. So absolutely that feeling it out. But this 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 is the fundamental difference between the dry line and the wet line. And yeah, there are often two schools of thought here and it might depend on what sort of car you're driving it depends on the car it depends if it's a double apex mm. if it's just a single if it's a 90 degree it like we just discussed it is all about bum and seat time mm. it's all about the practice it might work on one car like the beamer which yeah. is really heavy big car or be completely different with the ferrari which is obviously a light agile car they'll, they'll, they'll have different traits yeah well let's let's do the really difficult question then which is overtaking and defending <laughs> Okay, so we've got two GT3 cars here. So we're going to be obeying the sort of wet line, dry line. Um, you're the star. So let's say I'm ahead of you and you're trying to overtake me. Yep. And let's say I'm coming in here on the wet line. Any thoughts on how you can overtake in this circumstance? Because it seems very difficult. <laughs> For me personally, and I know it's cheeky, and I don't know how frowned upon it is. Obviously, with no contact, I would be here. Mm -hmm. I would be late and I would have zero intention of turning until I get to where I want. Mm. And then when I get to where I want to go, that is yeah. when I've turned. So, so I would essentially drive forwards and block this so guy. Make, to make it clear, even if I'm braking sort of normally and I'm ready to turn in and hit my apex and get a really good exit, I'm essentially blocked off by exactly. you. And I have to obey your where you leave me the space. Exactly. That's 100% what I do in the wet. I would go here. You're ready to turn. And there's no chance. You can't do it. You're not getting it. I'm trying to get over to where I want to be to yeah. then get that traction because obviously I'm not on the rubber. And you know what you're going to do when you come in, whereas I'm having to adapt on the fly. So it's very unlikely I'm going to be able to yeah. sort of what, to, to get myself in line and, and, and know what I'm doing, you know, off the bat. And exactly. And then going back, like you said, that was the overtaking, the defending side. So say I've done this to you, Kirif. So mm. this is me here. This is you here. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> you, you just block. You're fully dictated by me, short of me just disappearing off the edge somewhere. Yeah. Which can happen if you over, if you overcook it, and it's exactly. like okay, well, yeah. Well, I mean, that'd be something interesting to see how realistic it's. But that be. happens at Buckmore Park in karting after the the long first corner. We often see people go go, go yes. shortcut the track. Yeah. <laughs> they disappear, yeah. never to be seen again. Yeah, especially if it's got wetter since last time. But if you can get it right, then yeah, you actually dominate that space. Is that and, dominates the perfect way for it? You've yeah. dominated, you've owned that space. Yeah. They can't do anything. And about it's harder it. for this car to do something about it because it is wet conditions. And it's all like a dry where everything's a lot more stable. So that's one way. But let's say then that I've I've gone fully defensive. So I'm fully defensive now. Yeah. And it is wet conditions. So I would say there's po probably less of a penalty in the dry for me sort of having that tighter line. Yeah, because once again, it's yeah. that one last thing we did covers defending and attacking perfectly. Yeah. 
So that was me defending. Uh, that was me attacking there. But let, let's say. But you're... let's now say the roles were reversed and you were defending. Yeah. I would keep you on the outside. Yeah. Force you so you can't do anything. Yeah. And then that's my space. So the car in the wet, the car on the inside often controls the the, the tempo in the space. Perfect way. But Whoever's what... on the inside the, the, uh, controls the area. What would you do? Let's say then I've gone super defensive. Yeah. Let's say you're pinning. You're able to pin me. Is there anything you would do in the situation in terms of a cutback, or is, is it just a lot more difficult? It's because you can't really utilize the You can't the space. break here because yeah. otherwise you're down here. Yeah, it's all there. Ultimately, spook this guy into yeah. breaking too late or something. Maybe spooking to breaking too late, or it's a time to trial. Like if he does come all the way down here, hmm. can you turn early enough that really when he's early, hit, yeah, 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 really early? But then you do, and you end up actually blocking him a little bit. Like yeah, that. let's just run, let's just run that through. So, I'll uh, try and do it this way. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm defending. Sam the Star is is trying to take me. He sort of spooked me because he's sort of really there. So I'm thinking I've got to break late, 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 late. Or maybe I don't really know. He's managed to get in inside me with a fat drift. With a fat drift, but he's also <laughs> he's also slower exit speed. Let's say because yeah. you've you've had to rotate so much. But then you also got to bear in mind I'm now crossing the rubbered up line. Yeah, which is dif difficult. Yes. But and now I want I want to get my exit here and I can't essentially because you've just got yeah. to that point. I've is, got to that point before you. Yeah. And obviously you don't want to be going out here onto the rubber because you're going to squirrel all over. The place. Yeah. You want to be where essentially. Yeah. This guy's blocked a, you. I kind of I know what I'm doing on the entry, but that's a really interesting point on the exit because the rubber line still does apply. I think everyone's sort of in the dry, really getting the rubber down. So again, you can sort of. It doesn't feel like you're um, denying them space, but you're denying them sort of op optimal rubber just, just exactly. by being here. Yeah. So they've still got plenty of room. They can do with that what they want, but they don't want to be there yeah. because they're rubber. But realistically, on a corner like this, that's the only way in the wet you can do it. It's just by trying to turn early, mm. praying that it grips up, and try and block them to cut back. Yeah. So very different, uh, very different sort of techniques in the wet and the dry. And if you didn't know about the sort of wet line we put here, hopefully that's really interesting. And we've also done a video on how to overtake in the dry conditions. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff, by the way. But yeah, wet conditions I find absolutely fascinating. As you said, in Formula One, they just have so much downforce these days. They also go on the wet tyres where, you know, they, they can clear Big more of the water. Tires, yeah. In karting, we often stay, well, it depends what level, but often stay on, on slick tyres. Yep. So you just can't move that water. Um, GT3 cars will, will go on to wet tyres now but there's so many different dynamics here I think ultimately the main point for me and I'll get your point as well if you're doing wet weather driving in a sim um, and you're doing the same lines as you are in the dry you're probably not optimising the way you should be driving and and I imagine there's a lot of people watching who are basically trying to do the same things in the dry doing in a wet weather I can weather imagine there's cool. probably a lot of people who've only have done iRacing hmm. type thing they've never had the wet before so first, obviously, you drive a road car on the road. It's the exact same. You're not going to mm. cut apexes. So the first time they're going to do any wet racing, they're going to think, yeah, just a normal racing line here. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less grip. Yeah. They probably don't know to experiment over to yeah. stay off the rubber. And the common thing, you'll be here in the wet. You think, great, I'm going to turn in. Rear-wheel drive car. Whoosh, yep. Very common. And also on the exit, get the power down. Whoosh, Gone. And that's because you're on that rubbered line. Yeah, so and I mean, if you do start your turn in as well, mm. if you do try and turn in early, you're just going to understeer. Yeah, understeer for days. This is an interesting thing actually, because in karting, and again, I'm not the best. I'm not as good a karter as you, but often I'm coming in, I'm on max lock like that, yep. and I'm just waiting for the cart to bite. <laughs> just waiting for it to bite. Feeling the throttle. I don't know if there's a, a better way to sort of induce rotation. Generally, these cars have diffs and whatnot. Yes. But... So in the cart, you would use in the wet. You get, um, I can't remember what they're called. I think they're called Rain Masters. It's like a little foam cushion about two inches big and you sit on it so it raises your centre of gravity. Mm. So in the wet, you oh, use your okay. height. Yeah, yeah. So you're getting to this point and then you're leaning out. This is a cart, by the yeah, way. So yeah, so in a go-kart, not a car. Yeah. Obviously, you can't lean out of a car. <laughs> <laughs> in a go-kart, you'd be leaning out as much as your weight to the outside wheel to try and give it traction. Yeah, even lift... Well, in this speed, you wouldn't lift the inside wheel, would you? But Not on a, he uh, on a hairpin like this, yeah. you definitely would. Oh, okay. So you'd be leaning to the solid. outside, yes. Yeah. You depending with carting as well, you can obviously chuck your weight forwards to try and to try and grip up the front. So if you think you're going a bit hot, you're yeah. under steering too That's much. That's we see people in those unusual positions where they're sort of driving like, like yeah. that. It's the reverse of a motorbike racing. Yeah. They're leaning to the inside yeah. in the cart, you're leaning to the yeah. outside. You want to try and So in terms of setup in the in the wet setup again, um 
it's really critical to have sort of your setup have the weight not have not have the uh, front too light then you're going to it's, it's body weight yeah. in, car, in, 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 in cars in cars oh in cars yeah yes you don't I, want to have a rear too light in the cars no. basically which is often why you you have it you'd want planted. quite a strong front end yeah i would say but then too strong you then get understeer yeah uh, oversteer on it on power oversteer yeah i think setups are going to be a huge area for for driving the yeah, way i'm be interested to see what they do with that yeah definitely in ac it's very different but i hope you found that helpful that's how to drive in the wet using real world driving principles and uh with with it coming to wire racing lemon ultimate acc as well hopefully you find it helpful make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next video